Sarah Albadu here from Horse Racing Nation, joined by Gino Bacola. And Gino, I feel like I just talked to you, but welcome back. Yeah, we. I, hey, anytime. I love talking races with you. And uh, we get to talk about a really important race because this is the closeout race on Friday. So this is a really important race uh, to close out the Breeders' Cup portion of the Friday card. Because if you're alive in any of those late exotics, you got to be right about this race to close it all out. And hopefully, unlike last year, you can get paid for those correct opinions if you have them going into the last leg of whatever sequence you're in on Breeders' Cup Friday. That is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. And I'm just hoping for a lot less drama than we had last year with modern games and hopefully a winner or some prices underneath or something. And I feel like you're the right person to ask for these tough juvenile races. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and this is a fun one. And we will, I think see a lot of support come in for a couple of the horses that chip in from Europe, probably conversations starting with silver, Knot, I would say who is your lukewarm morning line favorite here. I think he's pretty deserving. He'll be a horse who I have in most of my exotics, probably not trying to beat this particular favorite in here. I was pretty impressed with what I've seen from him. Um, both of his losses came to a horse named Shaldine, who's four for five and has won four in a row and silver, Knot was covered up nicely in his last start. He was just behind the leaders in a compact field. He was two off at most, and he just like angled to the outside and was visually really impressive, widening the margin. That was his first start at a mile, and it, just, it doesn't seem like distance is any issue for him. So he's, he's kind of nice, and there will be some races throughout the day with the short prices I'm trying to chuck out. This won't be one of them. I think he's, he's definitely logical, in my opinion, and one that I will be using in with a couple others. He's definitely very live in here. And I think one of the more dangerous European horses on the Friday card, he does have those three wins from five starts. Like you said, he has a win at this mile distance, which many don't possess coming into this race. Um, he does have right-hand turn experience, although no left-hand turn experience. That's one of the things that I look for when looking at these European horses. But I mean, if you've gone around a turn, if you've gone around the straightaway, I'm not worried about the fitness or the distance for him. And these connections, William Buick, Charlie Appleby, they are just so dominant when they bring a horse over. They're not playing around. No. Eh, so for me, if you're playing, you know, throughout the exotics, I wouldn't toss him out of any, you know, pick fours, pick fives, pick sixes that you're playing. The the next horse for me that'll be um, in a lot of exotics would be Victoria Road, who is just really sharp right now. Now, I, we don't really know how good he is in comparison. He's not necessarily going to have the same sort of like time form ratings, and he doesn't have the strength of a resume, but he's just a sharp horse. And I love horses who just kind of continue to overcome things. He actually won at a mile and an eighth last time out as a group three winner. So Distance is definitely no issue for him at all. He should be fit late in here where some of these other horses might be short. Uh, Victoria Road will absolutely be uh, on the tickets for me. And then my one bigger price that'll that'll be more, a little more outside the box was the 11 Reckoning Force, who I thought came out of a really troubled trip. He was actually beat by, and the winner is, in the Bourbon on October the 9th. I think that's a complete toss out of a race. It was such a trouble trip for reckoning force. He hopped at the start. He was last inside. He was about nine lengths off, started to travel well, but he had absolutely nowhere to go. There was like a, uh, they were lined up all the way across the track. He tried to go inside. He tried to go all the way around. He again got caught in traffic. I think he might be a really fun horse to use at least in underneath, but I'll have him in one or two spots closing out some tickets. So I feel like I kind of have the logical with the four silver knot. I've got a bigger price with reckoning force and then another major, major contender with Victoria road. Those are probably my three top, the horses that I'll build the most around, but I will have a, a few others that I'm using underneath. And this is such a deep competitive field. I mean, we have 14 horses and while we both agree that the favorite is deservingly so and very dangerous in here, I definitely want to give everybody uh, their, their due a little yes. bit. Um, Reckoning Force was one that I didn't really love too, too much, um, but Obviously, the trip last time, there's plenty of room to improve there. I think that this is one, if you like and the winner is, you have to like this one at a bigger price, too. Um, I didn't love and the winner is as much. No, but and that, that's kind of why I went with the price instead, because I agree. I think he'll be a little bit short in here, a little shorter than yeah. I would want to use him. I agree with that. Um, I... <sighs> 
yes. I I think that he draws very well going from post six. Joel Rosario getting on this horse for Wayne Catalano, who has had Breeders' Cup success before. This is an Oscar performance baby. And I was talking to someone earlier about Channel Maker, uh, the ageless wonder that we see running again in the Breeders' Cup turf. And he actually ran against Oscar performance in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in 2016 when Oscar performance won. And now he's still on the track running That's when we incredible. have Oscar performance babies that coming longevity. to contest the juvenile. So I just thought that that was <laughs> super cool. Um, That's a, a great kid over, Yeah. Right? A, a win over the course and distance, obviously, in his favor. Um, I know that this Keeneland Tours horse can be a little bit tricky or a little bit quirky for some horses and it's played really quickly this fall so I know that having that uh, win recently over here is going to kind of intrigue a lot of people and be a lot to his credit winning that grade two bourbon he has a decent turn of foot he draws better than post 12 which he was in last time he's 100% in the money but I just am not totally sold at six to one. I think if I'm looking outside of the favorite, I want to look for bigger prices. And I am I'm a little intrigued by Nagarov, the number nine horse. This is one that I actually did pick last time when he won at Belmont at the Big A, otherwise known as Aqueduct, winning that grade three fraternity, going the six furlongs. Um, I really just liked his versatility going that into that was race. Not, and the win was nice. The October 9th win was really, really nice. For him, like with some of the others, you, you have the question of, you know, how far does he want to go and what kind of trip will he will he get? But what is great about him, if you have to ask those questions, ask them with a horse that's a price. Don't ask them exactly. about a horse that's going to be a short price because that's built into his price. Yeah, we don't know how far he wants to go, but... We've seen some real ability. I like the fact that he showed he could sit just off sprinting. So he, I'd imagine he'll be forwardly placed in here. And I agree with you. I don't think you want to be way, way out of it. Um, you, at least you haven't wanted to be on this turf course so far. And that was where I'll probably throw in on one or two tickets. Um, packs the wall up just because I know that a lot of these Southern California horses in the turf races aren't quite in, in divisions that are as strong. So the depth in Southern California in the turf divisions, there's just not as strong allowance races. And so to jump up into graded stakes races, you know, you can have decent horses do that. Midwest on the East Coast, the fields are a lot deeper. They're a lot stronger. But where the West Coast horses can keep up is with the speed. And so a horse like Pax the Wallop, who might be able to just sit a good trip and sit close he may be able to just kind of fall into a nice spot and get a jump on some of these other deeper horses. If they're getting in some traffic, if these horses towards the back of the pack maybe are a little bit outrun, he may just trip out in here, not on the mushrooms, but as far as the uh, the trip that he's getting <laughs> in here. Um, so packs the wall up. I, he's not going to be my top horse, but I, I don't mind throwing him into one or two pick fours or pick fives and having a chance to have him close out a ticket for you. I'm glad that you bring him up um, because he's definitely in the mix for me. I know that you're a, a daily racing form buyers user. I am as well. I'm talking to all kinds of different people as I know you are as well with yep. all different methods of handicapping and tools and things that they look at. So um, on buyers, he stacks up on that buyer par last time out winning that grade three Zuma beach and exactly what you said about the competition being a little bit lighter out in California for these turf horses but they go faster. Yep. New York speed is nothing. California yep. turf speed, however, is very different. Absolutely. And the fact that he was sitting just off the pace setter in that race in the Zuma Beach, and then it was kind of switches out, and he kind of won for fun. He was never really asked in there. That was a very visually impressive win, and it looked like he had plenty left in the tank. It was also at the mile distance, so you know that he can handle going this far. And, I mean, Mike Smith and Jeff Mullins, they're hitting at 32% together. He looks to get a cozy inside spot, saving ground, and he won't be too far off of it early. So I definitely want to throw him in in some tickets somewhere in there at what I think is a pretty fair 6-1 to one for a horse that's undefeated on the grass so far. Yeah, and what I've noticed recently with uh, with Mike is sometimes Mike will get kind of typecasted as someone who will always take courses way back and kind of keep them wide. He's been a lot more aggressive recently, and I, I wonder if it's just some of the particular horses that he's on that call for that. But if you look at the races where he's been aboard Pax Wallop, he's been right there. In fact, Pax Wallop 
was right off the pace sprinting five furlongs. And then, as you mentioned, showed that he can get that same trip sitting just off the pace and stretch it out to a mile. So I like, he checks a lot of boxes too. And the more we talk about him, the more I, I kind of am warming up to him at least. You sort of know what you're going to get from him. He'll put himself in a good spot. He'll probably be in striking range at the top of the lane. He'll probably be right there. Can he hold off some of the late runners? But he'll probably give you a good run for your money. And it's nice when you know a horse will probably be kept out of trouble and maybe ahead of some of that traffic. Absolutely. And traffic is going to be, I mean, such a huge issue in a race like this with this full field of 14 juveniles. Um, I mean, you want to make sure that your horse is getting a good trip. And that's kind of why I strayed away a little bit from the inside horse, just because these Europeans coming over, the entire gate situation is very yes. different yep. over here. So I don't love the rail drop for a horse that's coming over to the U.S. for the first time. But it could be tricky. It's just a different situation, like you said. And if a couple of horses to their outside go real fast, you grab a hold. All of a sudden you're getting shuffled all the way back. You're not able to get into the, your smooth gallop like you would like. So, um, you know, you want to make sure you're getting at least a little bit of value on, on some of them. But this is this is a very – like the Friday card is really good because you'll have the juvenile where I think a lot of people will probably look at Cave Rock, whether or not you think he's a single or not. But the other races are extremely contentious as far as like pick fours, pick fives, any type of rolling exotics. And this is another fun one where – I, if you were, my approach is going to be, you know, take kind of one of the horses that's super, one or two of the super logicals and then one or two really nice prices. And, you know, I'll probably end up using three or four in here in, in rolling exotics. I love to hear it. I think you can definitely find some value underneath this favorite who is obviously um, very dangerous. Like we already discussed, we haven't even gotten to Chad Brown yet um, I know. with the number eight. I'm very busy. Who's only run two times, but um, one on debut and then was second in the Pilgrim stakes last time out that turf course was yielding. So I, I kind of, I'm not as hard on him for not improving his figure at all. He ran exactly the same figure while other horses that ran on that day did regress figures wise. He kept the number exactly the same. I mean, every reason to think that this one will move forward. And maybe even if he didn't necessarily appreciate the yielding surface last time out, he didn't disgrace himself running second. No. And, and I agree. Like I, initially I was a little disappointed because he loomed up, but major dude just kind of put him away. Uh, but the turf course was a little funky that day. So I don't know how much to take out of it, or I, I don't want to be too hard on him just because of that. So I don't, yeah, I don't mind him at all. I probably like a few others more. I wouldn't talk anyone off of using him. Um, only issue is he doesn't seem he's no problem. A distance horse for sure. He just doesn't seem all that fast early. So he may be one of those horses who gets caught in some traffic or, is that sort of at the mercy of the trip that he's going to get? And if, if he is five to one ish in that range, I probably want a little bit more for a horse who may, you know, may have to do a lot in order to win this race. So I, I probably would in a, in a, in a like good way to compare, I would probably prefer packs a wallop at a similar price, um, getting a better trip than I'm very busy. I agree with you completely on that. I think that if you're looking for these horses where, as you mentioned, if you have these questions, you want to at least get some some price, some value for mm -hmm. these questions that you might have. And I don't know how they're going to bet Major Dude, who's drawn close to the outside with uh, the 13-hole for Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz Jr. I feel like Pletcher does this where he puts horses on the turf routing that – you're just like, what are we doing here? But he makes it work yeah. for him with horses like Wit and Emmanuel. And I feel as though, though, he makes it work because he understands how the race flow is in these New York turf races. Yes. They don't go. Yes. So he makes sure that he's the one that is um, setting these dawdling, casual, you know, waltzing fractions early, but it works for him because these horses end up having the stamina to go far enough to get the win. I don't know really what to do with this horse. Um, I feel like this is one that people might gravitate towards because it's Todd Pletcher, it's Irad Ortiz Jr. He won first time on the grass in a stakes race. Uh, I, I feel like he just kind of had things go his own way. I, and I don't, I'm kind of really worried trust that, him. Yeah, I'm kind of worried that he's not going to get that same sort of trip in here because he sat really nicely and was able to just move right up to the lead. Um, there's going to be a, 
a lot more speed in here, a lot more early speed. So if he wins, it's going to have to be from probably five or six length. I think it's going to be in a different way than how he won last time out. And I'm, I'm going to make him prove it from a tough post, probably getting hooked a little bit wide. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little cold on him also. It sounds like you are too. Yeah, he's he's not one that's uh, making the top cut of this race for me. Um, another one that I just want to briefly touch on, Web Slinger, who ends up getting into this race after being on the outside looking in. He's the one that upset Oxymore in the Now 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 stage. He ran Monmouth right Park. by Oxymore. Oh, too. yeah. It, it, and it was impressive. I don't, it was. I don't know what you think of Oxymore, who's going to be running earlier in that juvenile turf sprint. I can make the argument that Oxymore maybe doesn't want to go quite this far. I like that they're cutting him back to run a sprint race versus trying him again at the mile distance. I feel as though in that race, Oxymore ran very well because he took pressure early and he stuck around late. I think Web Slinger got a really great setup, but he also just broke his maiden in that race too. So, I mean, the sky's the limit for this one. Yeah, I have no problem using him in underneath spots too. And if you wanted to throw him into a, a pick four or pick five, I, I, I wouldn't talk you off of it. I, I will probably treat him more like a second, third, fourth horse to come running late. But I, visually, I, I had a lot of notes how I was extremely impressed with that performance. And at a big price, not going to talk anyone off of 20 to one with him. All right, well... Yeah, who else, who, else? who else haven't we hit on? Yeah, we've hit. Um, <laughs> like, really hmm. good for Maker. You know, he was behind both and the winner is and Reckoning Force. Wasn't really sure what to do with him. I kind of just like others a little bit more. You hit on uh, Nagarok, who I wouldn't I wouldn't talk anyone off of using, you know, his vis- his race visually was really good. His grasp, his, both of his last two are, are good. And m- gr- he is in excellent hands with Grand Motion in fantastic, fantastic hands most uh let's see who else we got uh gaslight dancer i i thought he really had no excuses in his last start i thought nagarok ran much much better than him when gaslight dancer i thought had every chance to win that so i i i prefer nagarok over gaslight dancer if we were kind of comparing those two just kind of coming out of that same race Um, i would agree with that i think Last time when I didn't pick Gaslight Dancer, I I was kind of like, I wonder if he wants to go a little bit farther because he had that success at Kentucky Downs where the distances are a little more approximate and you have the undulating course as well. So I feel as though he was going a little bit farther and then he was cutting back. Um, So now he is getting that added distance. But I think I think that. I'm inclined to believe that Nagarok's a better horse than he is. So with a more inside draw for Nagarok and seeing a little bit more from him, I I would go with Nagarok over Gaslight Dancer. Being in post 14 is not beneficial in this spot. No. Uh, Who else? Uh, Curly, Larry, and Mo. we didn't talk a whole lot about. I think probably just treating him like a pace factor. He won last time out, but it was one of those situations where he wins at Keeneland. They go 49 and change to the half mile and he's on the front end. No knocks on, on winning that. And he's, you know, he's been good in his last two on the, on the turf, but this feels like a a pretty tough ask for him. Um, And I kind of felt the same with battle of Normandy. I was a little more forgiving with him because he comes out of that pilgrim. Like we said, with the really weird yielding turf course. So if you eliminate that race and you're playing battle of Normandy off of, you know, the maiden win and off the width anticipation, probably looks a little bit better, but I still think he's going to need to improve in here. Um, it does make me feel confident that Suge throws him in here because Suge McGay, he's not the type that gets like fever to throw horses in big spots if they don't really feel like they're capable of performing well in that race. So I think just the fact that he's in here says that they think highly of him, but not quite all that high on him myself. Um, though, you know, I could maybe see sneaking him into like the really bottom, like third and fourth in exotics. You know, they paid a lot for him. Um, yeah. court, uh, for a city of light too. Um, I know. He's a half to Veronica Green, who did just break her maiden for Chad Brown and Peter Brent in September. But I looked at that and I looked at him and I was like, okay, these are horses that I feel like I'm looking at them and they're supposed to be better than they currently are. Yes. I think that you'll get a very fair price if you like him. I'm not going to talk you off of him. I mean, if you forgive the yielding turf last time and the regression on figs there, I mean, he, he's fine. Um, I just, I was more intrigued by others in this spot um, at similar prices. Yep. For me, it'll be a a lot of four, uh, two, one and 11. Those will be, I think the bulk of my exotics. Uh, 
in this 10th race, probably be closing out some pick fours and pick fives with some of them. And, um, yeah, I think a really fun, contentious race to end, uh, to end. There won't be, I don't think an overwhelming favorite in here. Probably five to two ish on, on the four, uh, which, which would make sense there. And, um, good luck to everyone trying to close out the, the fun Friday card, because this is, this is what the Breeders' Cup races are all about. Like, I, I love seeing full fields like this, where even if it is a short price, they're going to have earned it in this race, and they will be a very deserving winner. It won't be like a field of five where nobody goes to the lead and they just get out front, and we never really know how good these horses are. Everybody this weekend will be tested and will have to prove it. I completely agree with you. I think that this is uh, fours on top for both of us, and we vary a little bit underneath, but definitely some intrigue on packs of wallop for sure. Um, and then I think you can, I think you can get some good prices to blow up the tries and the supers if that's how you're playing it. But a, a very formidable favorite coming over for Charlie Appleby. But thank you for taking the time to chat. I know Anytime. you have a ton going on with your own personal Anytime. Breeders' Cup work as well, which uh, you'll hear me on if you want to tune into Gino's podcast. Yep. And Gino, we're going to talk can juvenile fillies, you? right? You and I are going to yes. talk about juvenile fillies on my show. So we'll preview that mm -hmm. race there. You can find me on Twitter. It's me, Gino B. Um, everything that I, uh, that I do, I'll post uh, the content there. I uh, host a podcast. that's all about racing, all about major sports, football, basketball, college football. If you're a horse racing fan, we'll always talk about whatever the biggest races are each weekend. So if it's Santa Anita, Keeneland, we'll shift the focus to Gulfstream pretty soon with their big meet that'll be starting up. And, uh, and I've been doing work, uh, the last couple of years, um, with a lot of different tracks work, uh, this work this last year with Louisiana Downs, with Sam Houston and, uh, doing work uh, with Santa Anita, always helping them out on their uh, social media feeds, a lot of preview shows and, daily selections and stuff there. So I love talking races with anyone. If you ever have any questions or you ever want to talk about a race, feel free to, uh, to shoot me a message and I love talking races with you, Sarah, you are, uh, you are fantastic and you're sharp and win or lose. We're not always going to win. You always put the work in, which I appreciate. I never have to worry uh, if you've done the research. So that's why I love chatting with you. Ah, well, thank you. The feeling is completely mutual. I always love talking about racing with you and hearing your opinion. And hopefully we give out a couple of winners.